NASCAR is a team sport, like many other professional sporting leagues around the world. Teams in NASCAR are unique in that they sometimes have multiple teams under their umbrella competing against each other. Imagine if the Lakers fielded two NBA teams, or the Packers had two NFL teams. In the sport's 75-year history, we have seen many teams come and go. Some are new to the scene, and others have been around for over half a century. Hi, I'm your host Matt, and this is NASCAR Team History, presented by Dogleg Media. In this series, we look to tell the stories of the different teams in our sport's history. We will explore a wide range of topics in respect to the team's history, when they enter NASCAR, their drivers, numbers, and overall legacy. We will also include memorable moments from you, the viewer. We are starting this series off with NASCAR's winningest team, Hendrick Motorsports. After this one, we will post a poll over on the community tab for which team will be featured next. Be sure to look out for that and have your voice heard. But with that out of the way, let's dive in to NASCAR team history. Let's start this one off with the origins of Hendrick Motorsports as well as some of its key stats. Hendrick's first season was in 1984. They have collected 298 wins at the time of this recording. They have 14 total championships and they've had 20 different winners in their time. Hendrick Motorsports would get its start under a totally different name, entering the Cup Series in 1984 under the name All-Star Racing. They started with five total employees, and they rented their equipment. Rick Hendrick would try to start out with a bang, attempting to hire Richard Petty, Tim Richmond, and Dell Earnhardt as the driver of their inaugural five car. Only one of these ever raced for the organization, but more on that later. With those three falling through, Hendrick would hire the former Rookie of the Year, Jeff Bodine, to drive the team's car. And I'm sure we've all heard the incredible story of Hendrick's beginnings as a team, and it's a great one. They would start the 84 season out relatively strong, with three top 10 finishes to start the year. The four races to follow, however, were abysmal. Hendrick notified the team prior to the Martinsville race that season that he planned to shut down operations due to funding trouble. What happened next was nothing short of a Cinderella story. Jeff Bodine would go out that Sunday and win at Martinsville, not only grabbing the team's first win, but in essence saving it from closing shop. Rick Hendrick said on the 30-year anniversary of that win that they owed everything to Jeff and Martinsville, because without that win, they would have shut down shop the following day. To go from nearly shutting down to nearly 40 years later being the winningest team in Cup Series history is absolutely mind-boggling. Jeff would end up winning three times that season, setting the tone for Hendrick Motorsports' rise to greatness. 1985 would statistically be the worst year for Hendrick Motorsports, being its only winless season in history. A 39-year history and only one season without a win. I'd say that's pretty great. In 1986, Hendrick would expand to a two-car operation, and that takes us to our next segment, the numbers of Hendrick Motorsports. Many of us know the staple numbers for Hendrick Motorsports. For the most part, you will always see a 24, 48, and mostly a 5. With the addition of Chase Elliott, they would add the 9 in favor of the 88. Hendrick would run some other numbers in their time, and we look to highlight them below with their winners. Let's start this one out with their original number, the number 5. This is the OG Hendrick Motorsports number. It would be in the lineup every single season except for three seasons from 2018 to 2020. It accounts for 53 of Hendrick's Cup wins with seven different drivers. As previously mentioned, Jeff Bodine would be the first to drive it, earning seven wins with the number, piloting it from 1984 to 1989. Ricky Rudd would be the next to drive the five, grabbing four wins in the number from 1990 to 1993. Harry Labonte would be the next for the five, and he would get the number its first championship. Harry would win 12 times with the number, including the 1996 championship. He would win by 37 points over teammate Jeff Gordon that season. Harry would drive the five from 1994 until 2004. Kyle Busch would be the next driver given the reins to the team's iconic five ride. In three seasons with the number, Rowdy would win four times, including winning the 2005 Rookie of the Year with the number. He would leave the team at the end of the 2007 season and would pilot it from 2005 to 2007. Casey Mears would become the only full-time driver in the Hendrick Five's history to not take it to victory lane. He would only run it for the 2008 season after Hendrick decided to get rid of my favorite number. Blah. And this next one is fun. 
Mark Martin would come out of full-time retirement to give it another shot, and man did he come back strong. He would win five races in his first season with the number in 2009 and would finish second to teammate Jimmy Johnson for the championship. Martin would run the five from 2009 until the season's end of 2011, but wouldn't find victory lane again after the 2009 season. After Martin would leave the team, they would bring another superstar driver into the stable with Casey Kane. Kane would win six times with the number, running it from 2012 until 2017. Who else remembers that wild last lap battle with Brad Keselowski to get the win at the Brickyard in his final season with the number? And that brings us to the last driver of the five, the current driver, Kyle Larson. Larson would be the driver to bring the five back after its three-year hiatus, and what a return he would give it. A 10-win season in 2021, he would cap it off with his first and the number's second championship. All in all, Larson has won 15 times so far with the Hendrick 5 car in just two and a half seasons. Now that's impressive. How many more wins will he add in his time with the number? And then we move on to the nine. This one will be quick, but surprisingly, there is more than one driver for the Hendrick Motorsports nine. As a matter of fact, we've had four different drivers of the nine just this season. Let's jump in. Chase Elliott is the primary driver of the nine. He would switch from the 24 to his father's old number in 2018. And man, has he exploded in success since that switch. 18 total wins and a championship in just five years. He is NASCAR's most popular driver, and it's great for the sport when their most popular is doing well. That can't be said for 2023, as it has been anything but ideal for Elliott. He would be sidelined for six weeks after a snowboarding accident after just the second race of the season. He would come back for Martinsville and would run the next six cup races. At Charlotte, he would intentionally wreck Denny Hamlin, resulting in a suspension for the following week's race at Gateway. Those events have led us to the other drivers of the nine this season. And first up is Josh Berry. Berry would be the driver filling in for Elliott for all but one race of his absence. Berry would impress in his time, grabbing a top 10 and a top 5, finishing second at Richmond. Jordan Taylor would fill in for Chase at the Circuit of the Americas race, as he is a three-time IMSA champion. His lone start didn't go as he had hoped, finishing 24th. And finally, there's Corey LaJoy. In one of the most strange fill-ins, Corey would fill in for Elliott the week he was suspended at Gateway. This was a massively hyped opportunity for the Stacking Pennies host. While the result wasn't ideal, some people even calling it deflating, it was a totally different car with a totally different team. I know I couldn't have done any better, so who am I to judge? And then we move on to the number 17, and here's a legacy number. It only ever saw one full-time driver as well, but because of an injury, it would also see three different drivers fill the gap. This ride was primarily Daryl Waltrip's. Waltrip would win nine times in the Hendrick 17 machine from 1987 to 1990. No bigger win than his Daytona 500 victory in 1989, where he would famously perform the Icky Shuffle. A severe leg injury at Daytona in 1990 would sideline Waltrip for six races. Let's talk about the fill-ins here. Jimmy Horton would make two starts in the Hendrick 17, with a best finish of 13th at Talladega. And I will absolutely butcher this name. Someone in the comments can tell me how to properly pronounce this. Sorrel Vandermeer would fill in for one race at Watkins Glen, finishing 24th. He was known as the Super Van. He was a rally champion from South Africa. I just realized how wonky this is too. Pace Elliott and Darrell Waltrip would each have a six race injury absence and they would each have a road course ringer fill in for the road course race that they were gone. And each of those ringers would finish 24th in their only cup series start. Kinda wild how that worked out. And then finally, Greg Sachs would fill in for three races and would bring home a very solid second place finish at Michigan. Again, with the similarities with Chase, Greg Sachs finished second and so did Barry. Kinda weird. And then we move on to the 24. Here's a big one. The 24 is the winningest number in the Hendrick stable and one of only five numbers with more than 100 wins. 93 of those wins belong to one man, and we all know him. Jeff Gordon would not only get the 24's first win as a number, he would get Hendrick Motorsports their first ever championship as well. Gordon is a 93-time winner for the organization, all of which came with the 24. He would also win four championships in his time, cementing himself as a true Mount Rushmore driver in NASCAR history. Jeff would run the 24 from 1992 until his retirement in 2015. A Hall of Famer, 
Jeff Gordon was a massive piece to the Hendrick Motorsports dominance in the 90s. He was also monumental for the sport's explosion in popularity in the 90s as well into the 2000s. When you think of Hendrick Motorsports, you think of Jeff Gordon. Jeff Bodine kept the team alive, and Jeff Gordon cultivated it into what it is today in my opinion. And here's a familiar name for the video. Chase Elliott would run his first two full-time seasons in the 24 car. He would win the 2016 Rookie of the Year and pointed his way into the playoffs as a rookie, which is super impressive. While he is the only Hendrick driver to never take the 24 to victory lane, he would have won at Martinsville in 2017 until Denny Hamlin decided to delete him from the race. Thanks, Denny. And then there's the current driver of the 24, William Byron. The Xfinity Series champion would come to the Cup Series full-time in 2018, where he would win the Rookie of the Year award despite a season that saw zero top fives and only four top tens. Byron waited until 2020 to get his first win, and what a first win it was. A walk-off win to send him to the playoffs in 2020. This would be crew chief Chad Knauss' last win as a crew chief as well. Byron has erupted recently, winning a total of nine times with the number, over half of those coming in 2023 alone with five total wins. How much more can Byron grab, and could he bring the 24 its fifth title? And then we move on to the 25. Ah, my favorite number. I totally didn't start the series with Hendrick just so I could talk about this one again. I promise. The 25 has 17 wins during its time at Hendrick Motorsports, with six different drivers winning in it. The 25 would also be the second number Hendrick would add to its lineup, so that's neat. Let's jump in. Tim Richmond would be the first driver of the Hendrick 25 car. The one that got away when he founded the team in 1984 was finally a driver for the organization, and man he did not disappoint. He would win seven times in 1986 and would finish third in the points. Illness would sideline Richmond for much of the 1987 season, making only eight starts in his final season with the number and the team. He would win twice in 1987, making an impressive nine wins in two seasons with it. Tim Richmond, in my opinion, is a major what-if in NASCAR history. And here's a cool mention. Team owner Rick Hendrick would only make two Cup Series starts in his career as a driver. The first of those would be in the 25 in 1987 at Riverside, and since the other number only made one start for the team, I'll tell you now. He would run the 18 in 1988 for his final start. That's kind of wild. I never knew that. Ken Schrader would come in to take over the 25 ride in 1988. He would pilot it until the end of the 1996 season. Schrader would win four times in the number during that stretch, the only four victories of his career. 1997 would see Ricky Craven make the majority of starts for the number. Todd Bodine and Jack Sprague would each run one race filling in for Craven as he was sidelined from a concussion that occurred after a wreck at Texas during practice. 1998 would see something cool happen to the 25. It would be renumbered to the 50 in celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary. The ride would be shared between Craven, Randy LaJoy, and Wally Dollenbach. LaJoy would get his only career top five in the number, finishing fifth at Martinsville that season. Dahlenbach would be back full-time in 1999 with one top five and five top tens as the number returned to the 25. Jerry Nadeau would take over in 2000 and would get the number back to victory lane for the first time since 1991 with his lone win at Atlanta in 2000. Nadeau would drive the 25 from 2000 until 2002. Joe Nemechek would actually take over the ride in 2002 and would run it until the 32nd race of the 2003 season. This short stint didn't keep Nemechek out of victory lane, however, as he would win at Richmond in 2003. Brian Vickers, the team's only Xfinity Series champion, would take over the ride to finish out the 2003 season. He would run it until the end of the 2006 season. He would visit victory lane once in this time, in a controversial finish at Talladega in 2006, where he would wreck his teammate Jimmy Johnson during the race. Casey Mears would be the last full-time driver of the 25, and this one is special to me. Mears would get his lone win and the numbers last at the 2007 Coca-Cola 600 in a fuel mileage strategy win. I love this car, this number, everything about it. And then Brad Keselowski would make select starts in 2008 and 2009 with the number as a fifth entry for Hendrick as a development driver. I have a feeling Hendrick is still kicking himself for letting Brad K get away, as he would choose to bring Mark Martin back instead of handing the keys to Keselowski, and the rest is history. And then finally, Chase Elliott would make select starts in the 25 for Hendrick as a fifth entry in 2015.
This would be the last season that NASCAR would allow teams to run a fifth team, and that is probably why we haven't seen the 25 back today. With this number being so historically significant for the team, I wonder why they chose to not keep it over our next number. And yes, that next number is the 48. I know, I know. The 48 is super iconic for Hendrick and the sport now. One of three seven-time champions drove it. Let it rest. Bring back the 25. With that being said, the 48 has 88 wins and seven championships in its time with Hendrick Motorsports. 83 of those wins and all seven championships belong to one man, my favorite driver. Jimmy Johnson would be the first driver of the Hendrick 48. Jeff Gordon would be the man responsible for bringing Jimmy Johnson to the team, still one of the best gambles in the sport's history. Johnson holds records that I personally don't think will ever be broken. Five consecutive championships from 2006 to 2010, and of course the record tying seven championships. I don't think we will see either of those happen ever again. He did all of this in a span of 15 years, winning his seven titles in an 11 year span. That is the definition of domination. I could talk about how great Jimmy is for hours, but I will spare you all that. We all know that he is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, to ever do it. And I almost forgot this, but COVID was a thing, and Jimmy would get it during the 2020 season. Justin Allgaier would fill in at Indianapolis in his absence for that one race. After Jimmy would retire in 2020, Alex Bowman would take over the number, being the current driver of the 48. He has won five times in his time driving it so far but Bowman has been even more injury-ridden than Elliott. He would first be sidelined in 2022 for five races after a crash at Texas would result in a concussion. He would then miss three races in 2023 after an accident in a sprint car. For the 2022 fill-in, Noah Graxon would take over for those five races, with nothing super significant to show for it. Also, RIP Noah, I hope you get the help you need and you come back stronger. As for the 2023 replacement, Josh Berry would assist, grabbing a top 10 at Dover and even winning the All-Star Open at North Wilkesboro, securing him a spot in the main event. That was pretty impressive. And then we close this one out with the 88, the final full-time number Hendrick would run, and it's certainly a fan favorite. The Hendrick 88 has 11 wins, and man, this is a historically relevant number in the grand scheme of things for NASCAR as well. Dale Earnhardt Jr. would bring the 88 into the Hendrick stable after receiving permission from Robert Yates to run it. Jr. was NASCAR's most popular driver for 15 seasons from 2003 until his retirement in 2017. He would leave his father's team of DEI to join Hendrick in 2008 and would stay with the 88 the rest of his career. Jr. would win nine times in the number, none of those bigger than his second Daytona 500 victory in 2014. This was an awesome moment to see live and Junior Nation was one proud fan base, whether with one or two eights. Alex Bowman would inherit the 88 after Junior's retirement in 2017. He would grab the first two wins of his career with the number, including the number's last win in 2020 at Fontana. Bowman would leave the 88 after Jimmy Johnson would retire in 2020 as the organization favored the 48 over the 88. This is another number that should not be absent from the sport and it needs to come back ASAP. And now we move on to some fast facts. This will be relatively quick compared to the numbers portion, but I wanted to go over some cool facts about Hendrick Motorsports. Starting out with Hendrick Motorsports' most dominant track, and it's the one that they would get their first ever win at. Hendrick dominates Martinsville, having won there 28 times. Aside from the Chicago Street Course, the only track Hendrick never won at that had more than one date was Kentucky. The winningest season for Hendrick would be 2007, where they would win 50% of the races that season with 18 total wins. All four drivers would contribute to the total, with Jimmy Johnson leading the way that season with 10 wins en route to his second championship. And then we got to talk about how Hendrick Motorsports has also had its hand in a couple of really cool projects to promote the sport. They would be the technical consultant for the film Days of Thunder in 1989 and 1990. We have talked about Bobby Hamilton's Cup Series start in the film 51 car, but Hendrick would also have the 46 City Chevrolet car qualify with Greg Sachs. The 18 Hardy's Lumina would attempt to qualify with Tommy Ellis behind the wheel, but would fail to qualify for the race. Another cool project they would collaborate with would be the Garage 56 entry at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. This was absolutely massive for promoting NASCAR internationally, and the car itself outperformed its expectations. 
Such a cool project that Rick Hendrick and NASCAR put together. And while I want to keep this video reasonable enough in duration, I wanted to touch on their lower series programs as well. Hendrick Motorsports has one Xfinity Series championship won by Brian Vickers in 2003, along with 26 Xfinity Series wins. Their Xfinity program would actually start the same year and race as the Cup program at Daytona in 1984. And then their truck program would debut in 1995, with their last truck series race happening in 2013. They have three championships, all won by Jack Sprague, along with 26 wins in that series as well. They also have seven ARCA series wins from 1985 to 2014. And that'll do it for Fast Facts. Let's move on to Memorable Moments. Now that we're at Memorable Moments, I just wanted to say, y'all provided some pretty cool moments for this one. So let's finish it up with your suggestions. Saito, Nicole's Gaming, and British Lad all suggested the team's 1-2-3-4 finish at Dover in 2021. This was a pure display of dominance, and Dover is also the track with their second most wins for the team, with 22 total victories. And then Beep Boop and Chris mentioned Jimmy Johnson pushing Chase Elliott back after he would win and run out of gas for his first ever career win. This was a great moment, almost symbolic of the passing of the torch in a way. Duddle suggested Ricky Hendrick, and this is an essential mention in my opinion. Ricky was the son of Rick Hendrick. He would run in the Xfinity and Truck Series before taking on a business role in the team. He would also grab a win in the Truck Series for the team at Kansas in 2001. Ricky would tragically pass away in an aircraft accident in 2004. Ricky still lives on with Hendrick Motorsports with Kyle Larson's primary scheme being identical to Ricky's Xfinity GMAC ride. This is a touching mention for sure, and I definitely think it needed to make the cut here. And finally, Chris and Kendall suggested some powerful moments. Chris would suggest Jimmy Johnson winning at Martinsville the day of the Ricky Hendricks helicopter crash resulting in his death. A day that should have been cause for celebration turned dark very soon. Kendall would then mention the touching win a week after Ricky's shocking death. Jimmy Johnson, with the always in our hearts message on the hood featuring the victims of the crash, would win at Atlanta. All of his Hendrick teammates would join him in victory lane. An incredibly powerful moment in the teams and the sports history. Great mentions, guys. Thank you so much for this. And that will do it for Hendrick Motorsports team history. I had so much fun researching this, and while it feels like it was a long one, it was so enriching for me, and I hope it was for you too. As always, I'm prone to forgetting drivers and moments. Let me know anything I may have missed down below for this one. We will be posting a poll in the community tab to determine which team comes next, so be sure to head over there to have your voice heard. This series will be a twice a month one and go hand in hand with track history and Xfinity series number history. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. It helps a ton and I definitely appreciate it. And did you know that 69% of my viewers aren't subscribed, but they are returning viewers? If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? We also have a Discord server. Find the invite in the about section of the channel or in the description below. We share our silly season picks, merch collections, race reaction, exclusive contests, and so much more over there. Please come join us. We'd love to have you. But that will do it for us here at Dogleg Media. I'm Matt, your host, and you've been watching NASCAR Team History. I'll see you next time.